Hey guys, so I've been discussing some ideas I've had with using cookies for authentication and I wanted to take this video and show you a very simple way of doing this without any um, extra libraries and this was basically the beginner um, what I first started with and then how I actually took this and added more stuff onto it. So to demonstrate this I uh, am going to be showing you how to basically set cookies in GraphQL. So right now I have um, a very simple GraphQL schema and I have a type mutation um, and it is just a register mutation and you'll notice we're not returning anything. So normally if I was building this before I would probably send back a JWT token or maybe I would do that when they log in, right? Or maybe I do it when they register. Either way, in this case I'm assuming I just have one register and then I'm logged in after that. Okay, so let's take a look at what that resolver looks like for a register. So first off, I have three fields at the top of my function. I have the arguments coming in and then in my context. So in my context, what I like to do is pass um, the response. And this is the express response. Now. I was originally going to do this example with the boilerplate that I set up that was using GraphQL Yoga, but I actually had to yank GraphQL Yoga at and add Express. And uh, let me show you guys why. So if we come over here to GraphQL Yoga, you'll notice when creating the context object, you can either pass in an object or a function. And what that function has as a parameter is the request. And this is the express request and they talk about more about it here but notice one of the parameters that's missing is the response and we actually need the response to set a cookie so you'll notice I actually just set up um, the server and basically built my own GraphQL yoga here with express and Apollo server so here is GraphQL express and I am uh, given two parameters on this function which is really nice the request which I don't care about and the response so I'm actually passing the response and this is the express response and this object will allow us to send cookies back so I'm passing that in through the context and then you'll notice here are a few things I'm doing so my front end is running on localhost 3000 so I have cores set to that and I have credentials true. So this is important for the cookie actually to be set. So you want to make sure you have that. Um, and then you'll notice I'm also using some middleware called Express Playground. Um, and this is kind of like graphical, but it's uh, coming from the playground. And that's just because I've been enjoying the GraphQL playground better than um, graphical. But that's just a side note. Okay, so that is how my response is getting or got here. Um, so next, uh, the usual stuff you would do with a register, right? So I would encrypt the password, or not encrypt, but hash the password. Um, and now I have my hash password here, so I would create a user, and then I would, I'm using type orm here, so you create the user and then you save it in the database. And then here I am signing a JWT token. So normally I would just return this token, but you'll notice after I create this token, and same old stuff, it lasts for seven days. Um, here I just misspelled user, so we can add the, the S there. Um, and I'm saving in the user ID, so I can use this later. Now instead of returning it, what I'm doing is I'm basically sending back a cookie as a response. And you'll notice I'm just returning a Boolean here. But so in the response of this request is gonna be a cookie. And I want to just go over real quick some of the things I have right here. These are some of the options you can pass with the cookie. And these are the ones that I like to use. So first off, here's the name. So I'm just going to call it ID. You could call it token. You could pretty much call it whatever you want. Um, I just want to do like a vague name. And then I'm passing in my token. So I'm actually storing the JWT token as uh, in the cookie or as a cookie. And I think that's a fine way of doing it. Um, you can also store like an ID in a session, which we'll talk about later. And then, so here I have three different options. First is HTTP only, so that's an important one. So that means the uh, JavaScript cannot access it when the cookie, when it's actually sent to the client. So that secures the cookie when it's there. And you'll notice the second one is called secure. This means the cookie will only be sent when um, it's on HTTPS. So I only, 
um, want this to be run when I'm actually in production when I actually have HTTPS so what I usually do is check the environment so if I'm in production I'll make it secure otherwise if I'm just testing in localhost I'll not make it secure and then max age I'm sending it for seven days here uh, and then it'll expire so I think this is a decent um, settings for the cookie um, that will keep it secure and your token secure so it won't be able to be accessed in the front end um, you could also um, sign the cookie if you want to but I don't really think it's necessary um, in this case because we're already using a JWT token so you know if someone tampers with the token already um, and yeah so this is what it looks like so I want to show you guys a quick little um, example of what that looks like so here's just a little form and uh, I'm just going to type and it's just going to call my mutation there so here's the submit so I want to show you guys um, what this looks like so here if you go to the network tab in Chrome you can actually see the request so here are the headers and uh, we can see this is a post request to GraphQL and we can see the data we sent to the server and then we can see this little thing called set cookie and that's what's actually um, a response from the server and then we tells it here's the name of the cookie ID Here's the value of the cookie, and then here are all the different um, variables or basically uh, options you pass for the cookie. And uh, you can see uh, that also in the cookies tab here. So now if I go to applications, I can actually see that I now have a cookie here called ID. And just to show you that it does show up, we can refresh and we can see ID does pop up every time you make a request. So that is how you can actually set a cookie um, in GraphQL. So just a quick recap. Um, important things to note are we are using cores here. And uh, we set credentials to true, origin to a little close 3000. And um, we're also using um, GraphQL or Apollo server. That way we can send the response as a context. And then in our uh, register mutation we can say res.cookie which will send a cookie back and we could do this in any of our resolvers if we want to and now another important thing here's just a quick view of the front end I am using Apollo client very important to say credentials include um, and you'll also notice I am not using Apollo boost for whatever reason Apollo boost would not work for me Maybe I was messing up the settings, I don't know what, but it cookie just would not be set. So here I'm just creating an HTTP link and setting the credentials to include. So make sure you have that, it's very important or else your cookie won't get set. But the next step in this is really to be able to accept cookies or um, how are the cookies getting sent and processed, right? So how is my server going to react now that I have a cookie being sent to it? So I'm going to cover that in the next video and also in the future I'm going to be hitting on uh, using the session library uh, with Express and that's actually what I'm currently using. So this is a nice way to do it if you want to use JWT tokens. I don't personally use this method right now. Uh, we'll be getting to what I, I like to use very soon. But that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching.